Hey everybody, my name is Nino. We're watching BuzzFeed Unsolved. Like and sub, it's it's mandatory. There we go. BuzzFeed Unsolved. Here we go. And where's my chat? Watching the scariest videos on the internet. It's not really the scariest, but people that, you know, that see the title, they don't know that. Clickbait. <laughs> okay, here we go. BuzzFeed Unsolved. Holy moly. Wouldn't mind shacking up in here. No, this is the nicest house I've ever seen. That being said, it is horrifying. <laughs> this week on BuzzFeed Unsolved, we investigate the Morris Jamel Mansion as part of our ongoing investigation into the question, <laughs> are ghosts real? No. <laughs> it's nice to go to a nice metropolitan location. This is a creepy ass face right here on the left. Let's continue. Completed in 1765, this stately mansion was the summer home for British Colonel Roger Morris and his family. Okay. Dubbed Mount Morris, the estate was situated on 135 acres of land, stretching between what is now the Harlem and <coughs> Hudson Rivers. The Morris family's time at the home <coughs> would be cut short, however, as they were forced to vacate in 1776 upon the outbreak of the American Revolutionary War. And on oh, September yes. 14th, Mount Morris, a home named after a British colonel, became the headquarters for the Continental Army under the leadership of none other than General George Washington. Wow. So this is the Washington War Room. And as the name would suggest, this is where Georgie boy fought it out his plan of attack. The big man himself was in here. George, are you in here? Why would he Mr. come back President? here? Did, did he die in this house? He didn't die in this house, did he? Why would he come back here if he's... Did he die in the in the Morris Jamel mansion? That seems unlikely. Maybe he did, I don't know, but it seems unlikely. This is what we call a spirit box. Oh yeah, you know what? This is the only time, George, I'm excited about the spirit box. Would love to introduce this little piece of shit to uh, one, uh, you know, a president. Okay. No, he doesn't. He said not now. Okay. <laughs> No, boys, why, not, why not now? Not now. Stop. I'm busy. Who is this? Vinny? I think they're done with us. Yeah, wait, hold on. I don't know that they started with us. Oh, they started with us. Okay. Go ahead and mark that one down as another point for the shame. I thought we got some good responses there. Oh, yeah, they're really good. Unfortunately, by October 21st, General Washington was forced to retreat and Mount Morris fell back into British hands and for the remainder of the war became the headquarters for British and Hessian armies. However, reports over the years implicate that one such soldier might have never left. Mm. Eyewitness accounts claim that the ghost of a drunk Hessian soldier can sometimes be found on the main staircase in the home. The infamous Hessian staircase. One of the a museum Hessian attendants said that he soldier. actually fell so into his bayonet. Hate when that happens. Not ideal. Oh, My name damn. is Ryan. My name is That's Shane. That's sad. What happened to you on this staircase? Can you tell us your name? There's a whisper. What did you say when you fell Oh, wait a second. Oh. Stop, 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 stop moving, stop moving. Why? Say that, can you say that again? No need to be shy, we just want to set the record straight. Come on. What was that? Is there somebody here with us right now? Could you make your presence known? Can you move something? <laughs> What's your name on this staircase? What? Oh, oh. oh. What's your name? Taco Bell? <laughs> Jimmy? I'm gonna get you? What happened on this staircase? What happened on this staircase? How all things go. Were you drunk? Is there anybody even here with me right now? I am. I know that. Show yourself. Let's go. Mm. That's a beautiful spider. I certainly would like to know where that spider is at all times. 
Why would you want him to come up to you? Where's my little friend? So Revolution. the thing with this is like rarely they can like compare spirit box responses from previous sessions. Like it's always unique. That's not a bad thing, but it means you can't validate it. Like somebody can get a spirit box response and it could just be like radio waves in the air and then you, they can be like, see, there's a spirit talking to me. But as you just kind of notice, there's loads of like occasionally, right? There's loads of like responses that make no sense. It's just voices and it's probably radio va waves. So how do you tell if it's something... How do you tell if it's a spirit or if it's just random gibberish? If if it's even a spirit, you know what I mean? When a local news crew from New York toured the dining room, paranormal investigator Vincent Carbone called out, is anyone in the hallway? A member of the mansion's staff distinctly heard a disembodied female voice answer, no, just next to her. Now this is the dining room. It's a fair amount of activity in here. I don't no, think... I'm just, you know those people who like fall in love with like the Eiffel Tower and stuff? If I had to fall in love with an object, I think I'd kiss a clock and sort of go out on dates with it or... Do you want to bang this clock? No, but I'm saying if I had to, I would. If there's anybody here with us, can you make your presence known? Can you say your, our names back to us, Ryan or Shane? Can you move something? Reportedly, Eliza's own adopted daughter refused to stay in the house alone, and witness accounts confirm her greatest fears with compelling evidence of the supernatural coming from the one room that is situated below ground. Located in the basement, the right Hessian soldier, the Morris Jumel Mansion's kitchen, visitors have reported witnessing swaying pots in a fireplace that's been sealed for years. Okay. Hearing disembodied voices and unexplainable sounds as something or someone moves through the room unseen. It's a little are we, down are we gonna see those oh, pots okay. and pans moving? Now this place has said to be uh, more active as of late. I feel like we're not alone. So show yourself, please. So happy. Bullet. We've got Ryan. We've got Shane. Here, one night only, ready to talk to you on this godforsaken contraption. Just speak into the microphone. Holler. Let's do the best you can to form a single word. Um, What's the name of this place? This house. Who do you work for? Who do you work for? Christoph. 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 What's your name? Can you say Vinny. my name back to me, Ryan? In 1964, okay. a school teacher brought their students up to Mount Morris for a field trip. The mansion's curator was running late, so the school teacher let the children play on the front lawn until they arrived. Hold on a moment. The 60s was 60 years ago. So when you had like people that lived through the 60s, there was like the culture revolution, the moon landing, emancipation, all that stuff happened 60 years ago. That's crazy to think about. As the children played, an old woman wearing a violet dress walked out onto the second floor balcony, looked down at the children and said, quote, my husband is very ill. You have to keep quiet, end quote. The children obliged. And when the curator finally showed up, they told her what had happened, thinking the old woman in the violet dress was a reenactor from the time period and part of the tour. The school teacher, <laughs> having seen the old woman as well, backed up the children's version of events. Confused, the curator told the group that the house was empty and padlocked, and that no such woman existed. Eliza, I've very much been looking forward to meeting you. By all accounts, you're a hilarious lady. There's a lot said about hilarious. you, and this is an opportunity for you to clear it up. Wouldn't it be crazy if like, we looked at this long enough, we hear a little whisper behind us? Yeah, like, you boys like that picture of me? 
I never did. Come on. We know you liked the, you like when there's <laughs> parties way around. Too you're a big specific. socialite. We're party guys. Yeah. Last night we went out in New York City and we painted this town with our vomit. Oh, we didn't. We were pretty responsible. You're 30 now. I'm trying to. I'm trying to set oh, the mood. Oh yeah. Oh, it was a scene, Eliza. Eliza. I only have one question for you now. Do Will you, like... you marry me? That's his question. But mine is. Do you like to party? My fair lady, I bid you adieu. I'll see you upstairs. Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr. And go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. All right. When Stefan reportedly fell off a carriage and landed on a pitchfork. Wow, that is bad luck, he man. He survived the fall and was taken home, but tragically died later that night. Oh my God. Upon his death, rumors swirled that Eliza had removed his bandages and let him bleed out. But the gossip surrounding her involvement in Stefan's death was based more on her outcast status rather than actual facts. A psychic visited the home years later and claimed to have summoned the spirit of Stefan Jumel. They reported that Stefan told them he'd been murdered by his wife and oh, buried God. alive. This claim was challenged in 1965. World famous ghost hunter Hans Holzer held his own seance at the mansion and said that when he made contact with Stefan, all the spirit did was complain about his wife. Wanting answers, the staff at the mansion decided to hold their own seance in why Eliza Jumel's bed. Why don't they ever hold a seance or do they? Maybe not in this episode. Seances used to be a thing, but like now when people are doing seances with cameras, they don't seem to be, usually they don't seem to be going that well. What are we doing here? Is a seance? A seance? I'm there we staring go. at these olives. We're doing a classic seance here. We're going to try for? and set the record straight and let's just get into it. Right now, my name is, I want you, oh. Hey, uh, by the way, I set up the flashlight oh, yeah. for you. You have a mag light here. I know you like that. I do so. like that. We're reaching out right now to Eliza Jumel. We're sitting in your bedroom and we'd like to communicate with you. That was Shane whispering. I didn't whisper. Yeah, you did. Come on. Unbeknownst to us, our audio recorder did in fact pick up this chilling whisper moments before. Really? Eliza, we really just want to set the record straight nice. here. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Some people think you murdered your husband. If you murdered your husband, uh, turn the light off. And I'm going to need to see some intelligent responses for me to think that's actually you communicating with us. Turn the light off now if you didn't murder your husband. Well, what is it, Eliza? If you think Aaron Burr was just a real hot slice of meat. Yeah, a tall glass of water. Why don't you turn off that flashlight All right now? Is there anybody in here with us right now? It's not going too well, is it? Can you say your name? They want us to leave, okay. The random response. Say my name, Ryan. Say it to me right now if you want to talk. Going to club. Going to club? Bear with you. Bear with you. Bear with you. I think we've been bearing with you. I'm gonna say. Start speaking clearer. That's, you seem like you're very frustrated right now. I just really want to eat some olives. Yeah, I get that. That's the thing, man, with these spirit boxes. Like, is it's just isn't it just picking up radio waves? Like, like radio signals. So if somebody on a radio commercial or a radio show happened to say the 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 you know bear with me. And it, it, because it switches through the radio frequency, pick that up. How do you, I mean, how would a ghost even, you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense to me. So I, it's, it's a little iffy. I don't, I don't get it. And I don't think it's a very good method or whatever. It doesn't feel like a good me um, method. You know what I mean? So, and it can combine word sentences from words from different channels. Isn't that asking a lot from a ghost that doesn't know what, like supposedly a ghost from the 17th, 18th, 19th century that doesn't know what a radio is, let alone a spirit box.
is not aware of the functioning of it. Isn't that asking a lot? Am I thinking too much about this? Assuming the ghost knows how it works, <laughs> decides to use it, and then still can't form all the sentences or responses. You know what I mean? It's, it's a little bit, I don't know. What if the ghost wants to say yes, but nobody is saying yes at that moment on any of the radio frequencies? What does the ghost say? Nothing? Something random? Huh? You know? Paranormal investigator Vincent Carbone says there is plenty of supernatural activity in Burr's former bedroom at the Morris Jumel mansion that could prove the former vice president is still very much All right, let's see it. Let's see it. Well, we've arrived at Aaron Burr's room, America's notorious loser. By the way, this is one of the only known busts of Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr. All right, Mr. Burr, Mr. Vice President. Let me just Google this guy. Probably Aaron Burr Jr. was an American politician and lawyer who served as the third vice president of the United States from 1801 to 1805. Burr's legacy is defined by his famous personal conflict with Alexander Hamilton that cul culminated in Burr killing Hamilton in a duel. Right now we are reaching out to Aaron Burr. We've been doing this all night. I'd love to see you. I'd love to ask you what you were thinking when you shot Hamilton. At this moment, our producer hears whistling coming from somewhere in the house. Where where was it coming from? If it was coming from somewhere, it was downstairs. Really quick, let's do it. Shag ass, though. You know. Where could that be coming from? Who's down here whistling? You're not supposed to be here. Anybody down here? Basement. Mother of Pearl. Is that an alarm? Yeah, you got you to jump. jump a little bit too. <laughs> Fuck me, that scared the shit out of me. After the investigation, we reviewed an audio recorder and camera left in the basement. What we found is perhaps one of the clearest pieces of evidence we've ever captured. Oh, you hear that? That's the whistle. Wow, that's clear. Also found in our evidence review was more whistling coming from other parts of the house, Ooh. specifically in the very room we returned to, Aaron Burr's bedroom. Is this the whistling of former Vice President Aaron Burr? Did, did they not hear this while they were there? Official explanation, just so I can make that clear after all the bullshit. Someone was whistling. Someone whistled. We said, hey, is that you whistling? They said, no. Well, if that was by accident, please don't whistle anymore. And they went, got it. Do, 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 do. It's possible. What time oh. is it? Oh, 11 p.m.? Let's keep going till 12 a.m. You know what? Why don't I keep whistling till 2 o'clock in the morning? Because I love whistling and claiming I'm not whistling. Right. Well, I think you've dug yourself enough of a hole there. So, I mean, if you can't, uh, that could be that could be a ghost. Why not? You know, if you can't really, um, if you don't have proof to dismiss, basically, or, or proof of, of it being something else, who knows? Maybe it's a ghost. You know, that's really cool, actually. Are you happy with your life, Aaron? No. You're gonna have to. Virgin. 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 She said Calling it. you a virgin. An audio recorder left in Aaron Burr's room picked up these voices. Is this the voice of former Vice President Aaron Burr? To find out, we'll investigate his room and the second floor individually. Okay, it's time for another solo investigation. This is when I, the person who doesn't believe in ghosts, walk around a bunch of dark rooms and I say a bunch of dumb bullshit uh, to, to fill the time. It's the same story every time. Spooky we mirror. We get up in the house. And I feel very uh, safe. And then I'm left to my own devices and I lose my mind. It's, it's honestly hilariously clockwork-like at this point. Are there any ghosts around? Look up, holy shit. 
What? Look at this clock. Let's appreciate this. Is that a thing of beauty or what? I thought we'd already seen the two sexiest clocks in the house. But boy, was I wrong. I'm sure the big guy's having a blast up there. Honestly, he's pretty tired right now. I bet you he's just laying down and sleeping. Well, let's just get this over with. I pass this to my brethren in ghoul hunting. All right, get on up there. Yay! Right now he's going up there by himself. Oh yeah, so pretty she said scary. It was really scary. Oh, I'm sure it was, pal. I'm gonna have nightmares about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bed yeah, is gonna yeah. be wet. Oh, this is awful. Per use. Well, well, well. Look who it is. Me, ya boy. It was nice to walk around up there and look at nice things. It's a nice change of pace from, uh, you know, the shitholes we usually go to. My hair's standing up, but I think it's just because I'm fucking scared. Wow, this is rather <coughs> horrifying. All right, folks, you leave me no choice. My name is Ryan. Can you say Ryan back to me to show me you want to talk? Eliza, Bye. are you in here? I'm sure Ryan's being very thorough up there, asking the spirit box for clarifying statements, which it never once has given him. Stefan, did your wife murder you? Yes or no? No? Anybody with no. me down here? Cool, man. Boy, do I hate these. Say my name, Ryan, if you want to communicate. No. How was it up there? Real scary? I didn't enjoy it, but I never enjoy it, so. Goodbye, Eliza. It's been nice. Thanks for having us over. There uh, we go. Follow me on Instagram or something. I'm sure Eliza has Instagram, and I'm sure she's going to follow you on there. All right, one more kiss for chat. There you go. Bye-bye, chat. I love you, chat. I love you. Guys, have a great night. Bye-bye.